kicked by a turkey. Look at that guy. Gorgeous. Safe to say that bird's never seen decoys before. I could have reached out and grabbed him. Good try. Jake, immature bird, got real close. There's no spurs on him. Extremely, extremely fun. And <laughs> the entire Pacific Ocean is the backdrop, which is unique for me. My guess is that a lot of folks don't think of turkeys when they think Hawaii, but that's why I am here. My longtime friend and longtime meat eater host, Danny Bolton, has agreed to show me around his family's farm in hopes of putting some white meat in the freezer. While turkeys have probably been coming to the islands as long as uh, the Howleys, it wasn't until 1961 when a ranch released some 400 Rio Grande turkeys that they became endemic. Now, with numbers surpassing 16,000, well, you can see where I'm going. Because we saw a hen right here, right? Yeah. And if she split off from the boys. She probably left him over there. Yeah, would they be this way? Chilling, chilling with the boys. Mm -hmm. Little bachelor herd. Exactly. Dragging beards on the ground. Can't walk that far because they're so fat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, this stuff out here, it's it's so much more open even than where we uh, called that other bird in. Yeah. This is like fun for the challenge right it's like they'll be in here i guarantee it in the next couple of days there's gonna be some toms walking through this zone but yeah well, well this is like exactly what they're looking for right because they can see forever nothing's gonna sneak up on them yeah and they'll roost in the trees like this like i see them roost in trees right in the middle of the fields nice or on the edge but i've seen them roosting yeah Yeah, down this, down this row right here. I usually see him hanging out down this one. Ah! I mean, that's just fun. I'm is not sure a, how productive is a, it is. Is that a peacock, peacock call? Or this, is that like a a, this is a crow call. Oh, it's a crow call. That I'm just using yeah. to try to mimic the peacock sounds. Yeah. They seem to, they either are very annoyed by it or they like it. We'll never know. words out like people come from the season and uh, you know but a lot of people from the mainland a lot of like big time hunters that I know hunting deer sheep pigs they're not like oh dude like turkey season's coming up you know it's, it's not really any of that feeling is that this heavy rain that set in is not really making them very mobile. Beautiful spot. Only time I've ever set up for turkeys underneath the citrus tree. There's a lot of great habitat and food on this ground, and since we know they're here, I'm not going to feel disappointed yet. Plus, there are some other birds that have my attention. Turkeys that don't talk are really good at making you look like an idiot. Because it's just you and your mind and silence, which is where, where man fails, being alone with, with his thoughts.
peacocks, or more accurately peafowl, have only been considered a game animal in Hawaii since 2020. This came a few years after a well-publicized legal battle, one where a woman was charged with cruelty to animals after dispatching a squawking peacock outside her condo complex. Safe to say, there's no shortage of these things around the island. Turkeys. Yeah, they're, they're too easy or too tough. We've had it, had it, had it both ways today. That's hard to squeeze off a shot at two feet. So we have this big um, landmark tree. And then in that corner somewhere, the, the turkeys are roosted. I just heard the first, first gobble of the morning. Up oh, second gobble of the morning. Yeah. Our intel from yesterday combined with some early morning gobbles gives us a pretty good plan for the day. Listen, prepare, and wait. surprise that this is where the turkeys were the most active. They really have all the advantages. Great roost trees, lots of food, all the things. All this has been freshly mowed, so the grass is really short. Again, nothing's gonna sneak up on them. There's a Tom, a Jake, a bunch of hens in here. So Danny and I are set up probably about 350 yards from the roost tree. Got some decoys out. We're gonna start letting them know that we're here, here pretty shortly. Just be real patient and see if we can't get some birds to work all the way in. It appears our Tom was on a different program today, which happens to me all the time when I sit up really early on a bird. Often what happens is these birds have their own program when they come flying down, like the route that they always walk, and if you don't know it, they just stick on that route no matter how good you sound. Unless it's just like really going off. If it's not really going off, you know that route, you can just set up on it. And they'll come in no matter what. You gotta force their hand a little bit here. There's a party going somewhere. It's not here. It's amazing how quickly these birds can foil your plants. Despite excellent morning gobbles and decent proximity, we were just in the wrong spot and chances don't get a lot better as you hit mid-morning. Couple more big openings up here. Still early in the morning, or early enough anyway. Honestly, it's probably not late enough in the day to kill a turkey. Toms are in with the hens right now. Everybody's being silent. You need the hens to lay down, and then the boys go, oh, better go find another hen. That's where we come in, we'll sound like a hen. Comes around the corner, bang, turkey dinner. Pretty simple formula, really. While my tactics are fun and effective for continental turkeys, Danny usually approaches things here with the more run and gun method. Yeah, I'm used to just seeing them and running up on them, blasting them. We got, uh, we got a lot of birds up here though. We'll get them. Wash, rinse, repeat, Danny. Wash, rinse, repeat. That's right. Love that intensity, Danny. As the day winds on, a quickly moving front covers the island, leaving us wondering how the birds will respond in the afternoon. Another uh, solid opportunity that didn't pan out. Patience worked. The hen came in to about 10 yards and just, if the tom was falling or he was too deep into the coffee to be seen. Clever, clever tom. I suppose. Now the rain is pummeling 
so hard that uh, I don't feel this is totally productive. Not done, just on pause. Of the three peafowl varieties, these are the blue or Indian peacocks. The turkeys have really thinned out, but what has not are the peacocks. So we want to do a little side-by-side -side taste test here, provided this peacock has a death wish. These birds have been well regarded as table fare for, you guessed it, literally thousands of years. From at least Roman times, peafowl meat has graced the tables of nobles and fancy people around the world. So it's interesting how white peacocks on private land are livestock. Peacocks on public land can be hunted as a game bird. I should specify, this is true for certain hunting zones on the island, but not all public land. Turns out, calling for peacocks, at least my calling, doesn't do much to bring them closer, so I try getting them to launch. Kind of like you might when hunting a ring-necked pheasant in heavy cover. Got him. <laughs> it's uh, empty. Good job, buddy. Right. Woo. You ever eaten one of these? No. That's too pretty. Young bird. Perfect. I bet they're gonna taste pretty good. I would think. <laughs> I would think. I wonder if they put all their energy into plumage and not so much into meat. Why do they feel a little skinny? Yeah. I don't know. All right. Pretty colors, huh? Everybody else ran. Look at that thing. You know what's really wild is this is like a turkey on steroids. Maybe on, right. maybe on acid. Oh, Might maybe on acid, yeah. Acid steroids. The uh, sexual display, right? Oh yeah. Is this is like the nuclear option? <laughs> a little radiation. Right. That's crazy. Look at that. Like a bunch of little eyeballs, right? Right. Yeah, and you could tell when we were watching those ones earlier, like just, you know, doing their dance. Yeah. That uh, when he was trying to like bring the pea hen in, he'd give her the butt. Yeah. And like shake his wings at her. Yeah. And then when the male would show up, he'd whip around and give him the eyeballs. <laughs> that is crazy. This is like the bird equivalent of the Irish elk. Right? Like... That's a lot of a lot of yeah. plumage, a lot right. of en energy into showing off for each other. Love those colors. With a peacock in the bag, we're about to head home for the night when Danny spots a Jake moving through the coffee rows. Rather than risk it with the bow, he borrows my scatter gun for a stealthy sneak on this bird. Color changing head. A little unwind. Yeah. All right, bird well, down. On the board, dude. We were set up for a long time within 30 yards of this dude. He just would not, would not commit. Yeah, he definitely went a little further than what I thought he was gonna be. Yeah. Turkey on the plate, well done. Thanks, dude. 
Like that tired old idiom about bird in the hand, this is a success no matter how you slice it, and while it would have been sweet to call in a bird, that's just sometimes not how it works, and I don't care too much anyway, because what I'm really excited about is a taste test between these two kinds of fowl. Peacocks have a lot in common with turkeys, but on a scientific level, they're more closely related to pheasants, and one thing that's certain is that they both share some, shall we say, flamboyant characteristics in their plumage. It's only this, this side, it's more green, right? And then when you go this way, it's way more uh, so gold. all shown off for the ladies, but it's also shown off for the men too, because it's like, he's got a bigger fan, I need a bigger fan. Look how many eyeballs I got. And on and on we go, yeah. It is just bizarre to me that uh, nature like selects for this, you know? Pheasantidae is the family. It looks real similar to turkey. Like, it does not look, uh, just in my head for some reason, I thought it was gonna be dark meat. Like, I thought it was gonna be this purpley dark. Well, you may not be wrong yet. I don't know, you can see it pretty good right here. It's looking like it just, it, it doesn't look as dark as I thought it was gonna look. There you have it, a peacock is just a giant feather. So there's like a nice cross grain yeah. look. And obviously we're not smoking things, but it's like nice and moist on the inside yeah. there. Really good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the salty brine you put it in, I mean that salt soaked into it good. Yeah, pepper. this is a total hunting camp meal. Mm -hmm. All it is water and, and salt. Yep. Mm. What do you think? I'm just trying to decide if there's a difference, right? It is absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. I'd go kill every one of those peacocks up there. <laughs> yeah. Just the boys, just the ones with the really long tails. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's good. I, I don't know the difference. I wanna say it has like more of a, the turkey's real kind of plain, it's salted. Plain. I feel like this one has a little bit more flavor to it. I don't know. I think it does have a little more flavor to yeah. it. It's funny how pretty animals kind of garner a little bit more respect. I feel like, like for instance, pigs. I just feel like nobody, not too many people care when I kill pigs. Yeah. People are like, oh yeah, that's food. Yeah. Yep. And I feel like turkeys have kind of fallen into that and more socially acceptable. And I think people just get I mean, they see that pretty thing. Like, how can you kill that? Yeah, well, it's look no, at them in the rain when it's yeah. a deluge. They're not that pretty. Um, <laughs> there's tons of them. So Plenty it, of them. Yeah, there's there's tons of peacocks. Like, not the first people to be eating them. They've no. been eaten for thousands of years. Yeah. And, man, you cannot argue with that. That is a beautiful chunk of meat. Yeah. Beautiful chunk of meat. Yeah. So, uh, I would keep peacock on the menu. Like I said, it'd be more fun to like let the dog run through there and see if you can get him to flush up and shoot him out of the air. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, that is a delicious bird. Yeah, I got no problems with it. Yeah, no. Not that this will ever be the case, but if you were to magically transplant a sustainable population of peafowl to public land in Southwest Montana, I can say without a doubt that I would be one of the most enthusiastic hunters. In the meantime, I'm going to stick to my more traditional pursuits. Back home, where the only coffee beans I'll see are in the grinder at 4 a.m. before a spring turkey hunt. So, I think we're gonna pack it up, get cleaned up, grab our, our pea fowl and our uh, Tom from yesterday and do a little cooking. A little cooking, a little relaxing. That's what Micro needs. Plus, my producer Jason is just really having a hard time at 33.
Really having a hard time. I'm not gonna come on shoots ever again. I'm gonna take that. 